Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to get that perfect filtered and blurred complexion using my favorite makeup products that blur and filter the complexion. So you guys have heard me talk a lot when I talk about products that I really like products that blur the skin, that add that soft focus effect, that make your skin just look really soft and creamy. So I kind of like to have that Instagram filtered look but without heavy makeup. So this makeup is still going to look beautiful in person. You're still going to look natural. It's just going to enhance your natural beauty and it's not going to look like you're wearing a ton of makeup, but your skin is going to look just really smooth and filtered and blurred. So I'm going to show you all my favorite products and all my favorite techniques to get this look. So if you want to see how I get my favorite filtered and blurred complexion, just keep watching. I'm going to begin with the skin because I feel like when you're creating that perfect blurred smooth makeup look, you want to start with your skin and I would recommend just going in with your typical skincare routine getting that moisturizer on your skin and letting it set down for about 10 minutes I want to say you don't want to work with a completely wet base but you don't want it to be completely dry down either I don't think unless you're very oily then you probably will want to wait like half an hour after you've applied your skincare routine but for me since I'm on the dry side I've applied my moisturizer and SPF about 10 minutes ago, so I'm just gonna get started on the skin. And I am going to talk about a primer because my favorite primer to use when I'm creating that filtered, blurred, smooth makeup look, when I want my skin to look particularly airbrushed, this is the primer I use. So I will go in with my Sisley, this is the Blur Expert Powder. Now I know you're thinking, that is very odd to apply a powder as a primer, but this powder in particular works best underneath makeup products, which is very unique for a powder product. It does work over top of powder, like I actually do like this for touch-ups because this is such a hard pressed powder, it's a baked powder. So when you dip your brush into this sort of powder, you're not gonna get any powder kick up because it is pressed so hard into this pan. Like I said, it's baked in there, it's a baked powder. So the beautiful thing about this is that it actually wears very beautifully underneath liquid makeup which seems like it wouldn't, but I promise when you try this powder, you will see just the airbrush quality and that blurred effect that this powder gives you. My favorite way to apply this is to use a dense brush, so you definitely need a dense brush to apply this, and I just dip it into this powder, and literally the only areas I apply it is right where I have pores. If you're someone that has large pores on your nose, you could apply it to your nose. Same goes if you maybe get like particularly oily or make it breaks up on your forehead, you could apply it there and same to your chin. But honestly, the biggest area of concern for me is just right here where my pores are. So I only press this powder in this area. And I do not take it anywhere else. And I'm not applying a lot of powder on my skin, just a little bit of powder, just to initially blur the pores in that area. And then I'll go over top with foundation products. Now, if you're someone that is just like, no, I'm not going to apply a powder as a primer, I have two different options for you. The best primers that actually have SPF to them and that blur the skin are the Chantecaille Ultra Sun Protection Sunscreen. I believe this might have a different name in the US, unless I peeled off the sticker and that's actually the name in the US. But this is a great sunscreen that really does perfect the look of your skin when you apply it onto the skin. It does really blur the appearance of your pores. And then I also really like this Paula's Choice Smoothing Primer Serum. It has a broad spectrum SPF 30. This one is very smoothing as well. It's quite silicone-y in feeling, so you do need to use it with more silicone-based foundations. Otherwise, it tends to pill. But both of these are really great if you want that smoothing, blurred effect, but you're looking for something with a liquidy consistency as a primer underneath your foundation. Now, I have a lot of favorite smoothing, blurring foundations, and I'm actually going to do a completely separate video on my favorite ones, just so I'm not mentioning like 10 different foundations in this video, and then it's gonna be so long. So stay tuned for that video. I'm not sure if it will be coming after or before this video, but I'm gonna do a whole series of blurring products. I'm gonna do my powders as well. So for today, I'm going to use my new favorite blurring foundation, and this is the Prada Reveal Foundation. You can see I just have the refill. So I like to just pump out a pump on the palm of my hand, and you can see I only have the refill, and that is because they were sold out of the full size. I got this off Selfridges, and they were sold out of the full size, so I just was like, you know what, I'm just gonna get a refill. And you don't really need the whole glass bottle, so you can get a refill if that's what you prefer. But this foundation, is honestly so beautiful. It has the perfect skin-like finish. It has a bit of a 
glowiness to it, but it's not as glowy as some of my other favorite foundations. I would say it has more of a skin-like, natural, sort of velvet finish, but it's very skin-like. So it really does just look like skin on your skin. That is the type of finish that it has. It isn't overly glowy. You're not going to get any sort of dewiness or a sheen from this foundation. But the best property about this is that it does have that beautiful blurring capability to it. So it just softens the look of your skin. Like it really softens the look of your skin, especially in the center of your face. It blurs over texture and imperfection. So everything just looks smoother and more beautiful. It gives that beautiful soft focus effect. And it probably is because it doesn't have that more dewy finish to it. So it's just absolutely gorgeous. I love it. And it doesn't reflect the light or anything. So again, it's not going to em emphasize texture in that way. It really just does smooth over pores. I would say it gives a beautiful medium coverage finish. You can't build it up to full coverage, but you could get a light coverage if you just go in with a little bit of product. Like I just went in with one pump and you can still see little freckles showing through and everything. But it does even out the skin tone in a way where it blurs the skin without adding a ton of coverage to your skin. So it really does soften the appearance of texture and just soften the look of your skin so that everything just looks beautifully blurred and soft focused without having a ton of coverage on your skin. And those are just my favorite types of foundations because I don't want a foundation that's so full coverage that it looks cakey and heavy, even if it does blur the skin. I want something that's going to blur the skin without it looking like makeup on my skin so that it just looks like my complexion is enhanced. It just looks like my skin, but better. I did take that foundation just on this Shiseido brush. I just like how this distributes product on my skin really nicely. And yeah, it's just a great brush if you're looking to get an even application all over your skin. I do like to go over top with a beauty blender just to make sure that there are no lines or anything, just because some brushes can leave a little indentation on your skin. So I like to just go over everything to make sure everything is really just pressed into the skin so that no makeup is sitting on top of my skin. It's all melted and so it's nice and seamless. When you're creating that perfectly blurred smooth skin and you want to refine the look of texture on your skin, I think it's important to remember when you are going in with your foundation brush, don't be buffing all over the skin and using a lot of pressure. You wanna be very gentle with your application using a light hand and then again, really making sure you're pressing things into the skin because you don't want to disrupt and bring about texture. So sometimes if you buff your foundation brush like this all over your skin, you're going to bring about texture by buffing products into the skin. Like you might bring about the appearance of dry patches on the skin, or you might lift up skincare, or you might be more prone to your skincare pilling. So just be very aware when you want that blurred skin look to just be pressing products into the skin to get that really seamless look, to get those products to melt into your skin. For concealer, I would say my most blurring concealer is definitely their Ciroc concealer. This is honestly a game changer for me. There has been no concealer on the market, what this concealer does for me. So this is the Ciroc Dew Drop Concealer and I wear the shade four. I could probably wear the shade five, possibly even six. When I repurchase this, I will be buying a deeper shade just so I can use it on my face as well. But for me, this works really well on the under eyes. And if I want to brighten any areas of the skin, I can apply it onto the skin. I really like the level of coverage that I have currently, so I'm not going to apply it all over the skin, but you could. And again, this is a blurring concealer. So when you apply it to the under eyes, it has this really beautiful soft focus effect to it. So it doesn't have any light reflecting pigments or anything I want to say. It doesn't have any sort of sheen to it or any shimmer but it does have this beautiful soft focus effect. The texture of this concealer is really nice. It's not too thin, it's not too thick. The texture of this concealer is really nice. It just lays on the under eyes in a really, really lovely way and it blends out so easily. And my favorite thing about this concealer is that it does not change throughout the day. So it doesn't crease throughout the day, it doesn't look worn in, it doesn't look dried down sometimes with some concealers, it will just look worn in on the under eye area. But honestly, this concealer just does not budge. It is such a foolproof, beautiful formula. Surat really, really did nail this formula. It is a game changer and I literally do not want to use any other concealer. Like when I do use another concealer, because obviously I do try and switch it up. I do have concealers that I want to use up. I'm always upset because this concealer just looks so gorgeous. 
I gave my mom this concealer in a different shade and my mom is 65 and she loves this concealer as well. So I feel like it would work beautifully for mature under eyes as well. It just is great and you don't necessarily need to set this down. Like just the way it looks on the under eyes, just how smooth the under eyes look is just game changing. So definitely recommend this concealer if you're looking for that beautiful smooth under eye region, this is perfect. Now if you're looking for a great facial concealer, the Clay de Poe the concealer is literally the only concealer that I want to mention. It's just so good. I don't know if I'd say it's blurring, but just how it looks on the skin, it is so seamless. It melts right into the skin. I think with a lot of facial concealers, we have the issue that you obviously want your facial concealer to match your foundation, otherwise, it will look like you have a concealer on your face because the color is different than your foundation. But this somehow just melts with every foundation that I have where it doesn't even matter if the color is slightly off, it does really melt into the skin. And this is a beautiful concealer because sometimes concealer, obviously the texture is gonna be different than the foundation you've applied. So sometimes the concealer can either melt away or it can crease or it can fade or it can start to change color even. But this concealer never does that so this is really foolproof if you are looking for something that is going to give you coverage and is going to remain consistent throughout the day so if you want to keep that smoothing blurring effect but you have discoloration then this is the concealer that i would recommend i'm actually going to apply a little bit of that clay de poe concealer to the outer corners of my eyes so i like to apply it in this lifted angle like this just to give my eyes a little bit of shape to help them so they don't look so downturned so just going to kind of lift my face up a little bit more. This has nothing to do with blurring or smoothing, but that's just a technique I like to use. So I would say utilizing creams is probably the most difficult part when you want to keep your complexion looking, looking very smooth and blurred. But one product that I have found that actually does a fantastic job of just smoothing the skin is this Persona Cream Blush. My favorite shade is the shade Bloom. So this is the Multi Stick. Bloom is just the most perfect peachy pink like it's honestly perfect this is limited edition so if you haven't got your hands on it i do recommend it it's very very good so this is a unique formula for a cream blush so what i like to do is i like to actually pick up the product on a brush don't apply it directly to the skin because then again you're going to disrupt what you've already applied on your skin you're going to move about the foundation underneath and we already have that beautiful smooth blurred look currently so you don't want to ruin it by applying product over top it just will lift product, that's just what will happen. So I like to go in with the brush, I like to make sure the product is evenly distributed on the bristles so that everything is melted in evenly onto this brush. And then you just are going to stipple it onto the cheek. So you're basically pressing up and down in this motion. And that way, again, this product will get pressed into the cheek, so it's going to just melt into your skin. It's not going to look like there's product sitting on top of your cheek. Is going to just melt right into the skin and become one with the skin and because i'm just pressing it into the skin we're going to still get that smooth and blurred look but honestly a big part of that is this cream blush formula being a smoothing cream blush formula so that it does honestly reduce the appearance of texture on your skin it's very very unique for a cream blush because most of the time we think of cream formulas they do just naturally emphasize texture unless the formula is made right and it has poor blurring technology which i feel like this product does it's a really great cream blush if you want that perfected airbrush looking skin powder is something that is going to be extremely important when you're going for that airbrushed filtered look on your skin now i typically like to use a separate powder for my under eyes and my face just because i feel like Loose powders look better on the under eyes, but pressed powders look better on your face. That is just what I have noticed. I feel like pressed powders, they do give that beautiful airbrush quality, that blurred effect, that filtered effect. But loose powders, they can be a little bit more finicky to use, I wanna say. And I feel like they look better on the under eye region because they're usually a little bit more finely milled. And sometimes I notice that loose powders just don't do as well of a job as blurring the skin. I think because they're so finely milled, but I typically don't like to use pressed powders under the eyes because they can look a little bit heavier under that region. So typically that is why I like to use a loose powder for under eyes and then a pressed powder for my face. So my favorite blurring powder to set my under eyes is this Rodeal Loose Powder. It's the glass powder 
The Rodeo Glass Powder Loose Setting Powder. This is honestly fantastic and it is so underrated. No one talks about it. Maybe if you can't get that powder in your country or something like that. My second favorite powder is the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder. I have mine in the shade Pound Cake. I think Cupcake might work a little better or they just came out with a peach shade. That might look a little better on me right now. But if I had to choose a favorite, it would be this Rodeo. I just think this is a good second place. I know people ask me about the Givenchy. Don't love that because it leaves little shimmer particles under my eyes, but that's a good option if you're someone that doesn't mind shimmer particles on the skin. But I'm gonna go in with this Rodeal Pressed Powder. So when you're setting your concealer for that blurred look, you really wanna make sure that you're first patting out any creases on your under eyes before you set in your powder because you don't wanna set in any creases. So really, make sure. These are all pressed out. I'm gonna make a weird face. And then, I guess I won't make the weird face yet, but you're gonna dip your um, beauty blender. So I just like to use the beauty blender that I've currently used. So it's still a little bit damp, which is fine. And then I literally get off all that remaining powder so that there is barely any powder on the tip of this brush. You've basically seen, I've just wiped off almost all the powder, but the powder is just sunk into this sponge. And then I make that face and I press it into the under eyes. I don't go all the way up to the lash line because if I apply a powder too close to the lash line, then it's just going to sit in those little fine lines. So I literally just press it where I get creasing throughout the day or where I have the, I don't know, the most hollowness in my under eyes, the most darkness on my under eyes. I just don't bring it like all over the under eyes, just in that region there. And literally that is it. That is just going to set down that powder. It is going to add a blurred effect to that area. It's going to make everything just look so much smoother. And honestly, it does look way better when you set your under eyes just with a little bit of powder, I promise. It, it just does look better, I swear. You don't need to use a lot of powder. Just that little bit of powder makes the world of a difference. And this powder is great because it's incredibly finely milled. It is not going to look like powder on your under eye region if that is something that concerns you. It looks smooth and blurred, so you are ready for the rest of your makeup application. Okay, so lately I've actually been preferring to do my blush before I do bronzer or highlighter and all that stuff. I just feel like it looks better on the complexion. And when I'm looking for a powder blush, I want, obviously, something that is going to enhance my complexion, make my complexion look better, and also slightly blur the skin as well. And that can be tricky to find in a blush because if you go with a blush that's too matte, it looks too drying on the skin sometimes and can actually make texture look worse. But if you go for something too shimmery, obviously the shimmer particles in that blush formula are going to reflect off the light and therefore you're going to notice texture on the skin. So I like to find a nice balance of something that's mostly matte with a little bit of a sheen to it. Some of my favorite blushes to really keep this smooth blurred effect include the Givenchy Prism Libre Blush. This is great, this is a loose powder blush, but it really it does this great job of melting into the skin and it does have this blurring capability. It's a very cool one. I also really love the Gucci blushes because these are mostly matte with just an ever, ever, ever so soft sheen. This is another great option. I also really like the Chantecaille blushes. The shade Grace is probably my favorite. These are really great as well because they're very finely milled and again, they just melt into the skin. And then of course, my favorite blushes of all time, the Valentino blushes. These are great. I love the shade number nine and number two because these have a little bit of that sheen and they're almost like a powder to cream formula. So they really do melt into the skin, but they do not emphasize texture at all. They honestly, enhance your complexion and make your complexion look even better. So love these. They're just very smoothing blushes, all of these products I mentioned, that will just make your complexion look better. I feel like it's been a while since I've used the Gucci blush, so let's take this Gucci blush in the shade 04 Bright Coral. I like to just dip into that blush. As always, getting that excess product off because I want it evenly distributed. I don't want too much product on my brush. And then just pressing over top of that cream blush that I've applied and applying it a little bit higher onto the skin. But again, you're seeing, to get that smoothed effect, I'm pressing this blush onto the skin. I'm not sweeping it all over the skin. I'm not buffing that product onto the skin, really melting this into the skin by just pressing it and pressing it lightly. And again, you can go in with a little bit of product, but you can always build up that product if you want a little bit more. 
but pressing it into the skin is going to make sure you're not disrupting any product underneath so that everything is going to lay smoothly on the skin. For bronzer, I would say my favorite bronzers for that smoothing effect is this Hermes bronzer. This has just become a holy grail. It is just like a complexion enhancer. It almost doesn't even look like a full on bronzer, but it really just does smooth out the skin. It's such a beautifully finely milled powder. But if you're looking for like um, another bronzer that maybe adds a bit more color, this Chantecai Real Bronze in the shade Sirena. They have another shade Goa as well that's a little bit deeper. This is a great one as well if you're looking for a bronzer that has a bit more of a sheen to it. And this one's really great because it does melt into the skin. It's not going to add any texture. So this is a beautiful one if you want that really lovely skin-like effect. I'm going to use the Hermes bronzer just because it's my favorite using the Sonia G Niji Pro. Love this brush for bronzer. So you can be a little heavier handed with this bronzer because it's not ultra pigmented, but it's always getting that product off. And then I start at the top of my forehead and as you can see, I'm tapping it into the skin, not buffing so that we're not disrupting that product underneath. And then like I said, I've been applying my makeup a little bit differently. So I've actually just been bringing the bronzer across my nose and then like barely bringing it across the cheeks because I feel like now I already have a little bit of definition from the blush so I don't really need much from the bronzer. I'll just kind of run it over just to make sure everything's connected but I'm not really applying that much bronzer to my cheeks anymore and I just kind of like that effect more and then a little bit on my chin and sometimes I just like to bring it over top of my eyebrows so I kind of like this technique I'll show you. I like to get a little bit of a bigger buffing brush I'll just take that bronzer on this buffing brush and I'll kind of wing out this area right here just to get a little bit of color on this part of my eyes. I'll run it all over the eyelids into the crease as well just for some really subtle definition. Now if you're going for that really smooth effect on your skin you might just want to skip highlighter or you could use just a very sheer sort of balmy highlighter at the end. I'll show you my favorite highlighter product that I would use for this sort of technique if I really want that blurred smooth look. I think it's actually okay to go in with a little bit of highlighter just on the very high points of the cheeks. Using something like the Clay de Peau Refining Pressed Powder would be a great option just to add that beautiful sheen just to the tops of the cheekbones. But if I'm going for like ultra, ultra smooth filtered effect where I want no reflection on the skin, I'm gonna use the Chantecai Lotus Perfect Blur Glow Powder. This is a limited edition. Get your hands on it while you can. This is the most beautiful, subtle highlighter powder. You can be heavy handed with this because it's a big powder and it really does not add texture to your skin. So I'm applying it with an eyeshadow brush just because I can get a really precise application with this sort of brush. I'm going to just apply it to the tops of the cheekbones. This is so incredibly subtle. You could honestly use a bigger brush with this product because it's, it's so subtle. It's basically a brightening powder versus it being a highlighter. It's just a powder that's a little bit lighter than my skin tone that has an ever, ever, ever so soft sheen. This is just the most beautiful, delicate, I don't even want to call it a highlighter. It's like a brightening powder. It is absolutely gorgeous. So if you're someone that wants that very subtle highlighter look, but that is in a powder, so it's in a powder form and it's a glowy powder, but it blurs the skin. This honestly is the only glow powder that I have found that blurs the skin. It is fantastic. And then this is also a multi-purpose powder for me because what I like to do is I will also use this to buff my complexion at the end. So if I want, again, that really smooth filtered effect. So I like to just pick that powder up on the Sonia G buffing brush. And then again, I just like to take off that excess product. And what you do is you run over all the edges where you have applied that makeup so that there are no harsh lines on the skin because I want some of the bronzer, the blush, and the highlight to all melt into one another so that there are no stripes on the skin where you've applied that individual layer of product. You don't want harsh lines on your skin, so you're going to buff over everything. Now I know I said not to buff on your skin because it disrupts texture, but this brush is the only brush that works to buff into the skin, and I'm being very light-handed. I'm not pressing hard. This does not disrupt product underneath. And by buffing this glow powder into the skin, honestly, the way it makes your skin look even more filtered and blurred, and just, it looks even more skin-like. It looks smoother, it looks more soft focus, 
This is truly a game-changing powder. I wish it was not limited edition because it's one of my favorites. So I just go over everything. And you notice that I'm keeping it more to the exterior of my skin. I'm not bringing it really to the center of my cheeks because I'm going to use a different powder. But this is great if you want to just use this powder in a larger area. You could stamp it on the high points of the face as well. Just a gorgeous blurring powder, but it's really unique because it's a glow powder that also blurs your skin which usually you don't find because a lot of glowy powders obviously are going to emphasize texture. This is a game changer, this is unique, this is beautiful. And for my final powder, I know it looks like a lot of products, but honestly I'm using such small amounts of these products that it doesn't look like, it doesn't look makeup-y on the skin. It still looks really beautiful, it still enhances my complexion, it doesn't look like I'm wearing a ton of makeup. You can still see freckles showing through and stuff like that. But again, the trick is just to use a little bit of product and go slowly, work slowly with your products, just go in a little bit at a time and you will not have a makeup-y look at the end, you'll still look natural. So this is my favorite technique to complete the blurred and filtered look, is to use a refining press powder. And this is the best refining press powder, this is the Clay de Peau refining press powder. This is the ultimate, like those Instagram blur filters, this is the, this is the ultimate Instagram filter in a powder form. This honestly blurs your skin as soon as you touch this powder to your skin. It is so great. They just recently reformulated this and I'm happy to report the reformulation is just as good. I like to take a little bit of br a little brush because I'm not someone who's oily all over and I don't want to apply powder all over my skin. I just want to apply powder in precise specific areas so that I get rid of the texture, I get rid of the shininess, and I just blur the skin only in specific areas where I want it to be. So again, the trick with this is to just press it into the skin. So press it where you have any areas of pores, so that's gonna be right beside my nose and the center of my face. I do like to bring it in the sides of the nose as well, just so I can get a little oily there. I like to go in the middle of the chin because I don't wanna be shiny there and I wanna reduce texture and anything like that there, and also in the center of my forehead. You might want to bring it a little bit like under your jawline here because it doesn't look very nice to be shiny there, but honestly that it are, those are the only areas where I would apply powder, and this powder is just an Instagram filter and a powder, it is so good. So I feel like while I'm here I might as well just finish the rest of my makeup, so I'm just going to go in with this Sisley, the Phyto Lip Twist in the shade number 24. It's just a really great nude. And then I'm going to top it with a little bit of this Victoria Beckham lip gloss. This is the posh gloss in the shade Bikini. I'm just going to apply that to the center of the lips. This is a really great formula. For the eyes, I'm gonna do something super quick. I'm gonna use this Victoria Beckham Longwear Crease Proof Eyeshadow Stick in the shade Trench. I'm just going to run this all over the lid. And then I'm going to blend it out with a little brush as well. This is basically like a little bit deeper than my skin tone. So it's not going to add too much color or anything, but it's just gonna be nice for a little bit of color. And then I'm also just going to take this Surratt eyeshadow. This is the Souffle eyeshadow in the shade Ciel Doré. You can either use a brush or your fingers. I'm just going to use my fingertips. This formula, I can never get enough. Like it's the weirdest formulation ever. It feels like jello, but it's so gorgeous. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of a sheen all over the eyelid, just pressing it in. And then just because this is limited edition and I'm going to use it while I can, I'm gonna use this Chanel. This is the Brune Platine Eyeliner, the long lasting eyeliner. It was just released with their limited edition collection. I'm just going to run this on the upper lash line just keeping it super close to that upper lash line and then I'm just buffing it out with this BK Beauty 204 brush. Again, just running over the edges, not being super precise, just to get a more lived in eyeliner look because I don't like anything harsh on the eyes. I just went and added a few coats of this Westman Atelier I Want You Mascara, beautiful brown mascara. Finishing off the eyes, going back in with that Victoria Beckham eyewear pencil, and I'm just going to apply it to the lower lash line, from outer corner to inner corner. Again, just to add a little bit of something there, but I don't really want much color on my lower lash line. And then I'm just buffing it in with that same brush I used on the top lid. And then finally, I just went in and tight lined with this Hourglass Black Eyeliner, so the shade Obsidian. 
just in the upper waterline. And that is it for this look. So this is my favorite way and my favorite beauty products to really create that beautiful blurred and filtered complexion but it still looks like skin in real life. You're not going to be looking like you're wearing heavy makeup. It still looks natural in person, and that is my favorite thing. It really does just enhance your natural beauty and make your complexion look even better. It makes you look healthier, but you still get that blurred and perfected look without it looking like you are wearing a lot of makeup. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like this video if you like it, and I'll see you in my next video.